welcome to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. These are the best lessons that the Lord has ever given to me. And we are asking for every true believer. And if you're not a believer, then you are learning how to be a believer. And this is a prescription for revival. Let the, for us as true believers, this is our desire. Let a few Christians get thoroughly right with God. If this is not done, the rest will come to nothing. Now, there can be a revival because when Daniel wrote in Daniel 9, he said, that's why this evil is come upon us, because we have not prayed unto thee that we would turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. You cannot understand this book. God will not reveal his word or to a compromising Christian, and he will not receive any blessings as a compromising Christian. So this is what he's teaching us to do, Dr. Torrey, a great Bible teacher, and his son was a missionary to Korea. And this is one of the things it says. Now, we have, dis we have gone through these, and we're going to continue this. This means, as a child of God, never taken property of others, including theft of their good name by repetition of gossip. Gossip is an abomination. And then it means to use our speech, our power of speech, to edify and not corrupt. It means that we do not grieve God's Holy Spirit, indwelling spirit, now we saw that, by bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking, or malice. It means kindness toward others with tenderness of heart, forgiving and forgiving and forgiving again as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Getting thoroughly right with God means ruthless examination of ourselves and honest confession of sin both to God and to any person sinned against. Only then will our heart condemn us not. Only then will we have confidence toward God. Only then will we know that whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. That is 1 John 3, 21 and 22. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all matter of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy as I am holy. 1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. Let's pray. Oh, our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, once again we come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace to help in time of need. We thank Thee and praise Thee that our great high priest in heaven is merciful and faithful, and He is touched with our infirmities. We know that almost every family that is a true child of God today is being attacked as never before. Satan is trying to deceive the very elect. And if we don't get back to this word, we will not know how to honor thee and glorify thee in the times of trials and tribulations and persecutions. Help us each to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This 
book teaches us that we are, as a true child of God, know the fullness of God, the fullness of Christ, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. This is my desire for every true believer today, and that we will get on our knees asking thee to guide us into all truths. Put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Putting on the shield of faith, which is able to quench all the fiery darts of Satan. And the Holy Spirit and the word and the blood will conquer all sin in each of our lives and conquer all satanic powers, all demonic spirits against this body of believers and against our little children, against our armed forces, against this nation. Every true believer praying for the peace of Jerusalem, the outpouring of thy spirit on this little nation. Praying for our leaders, Benjamin Netanyahu, Obama, all of these leaders, that need Christ. All of these leaders that have to know thee before the Spirit of God will guide them into all truth. Praying for our policemen, divine protection for them also, and our firemen, all of the servants that are serving thee to protect us. Give them divine protection and help them to know that we are asking for their salvation and asking that they will accept this gift of eternal life, knowing that thy word will guide and direct them by the Spirit of God into all truth. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against this prayer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So as we saw last week, and this is a sad, a sad, sad thing for those that are lost. But you know, for people that know Christ, we live the abundant life. And there is, you can't worry. If you worry, it, ca it causes 38 diseases. You cannot let your heart be troubled. You cannot fear. Because as a child of God, God has promised to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You can not worry and trust God at the same time. And then we see the man lost his perfection in every realm and until he is willing to become alive to Christ and his spirit, he shall abide eternally in death. The lake of fire, Revelation 20, 15. And then we saw Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death, and Adam all die. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then Leviticus 17, 11, It is the blood that makes an atonement for our sins. So only this which is a trinity is capable of fellowship with the Godhead. Our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That is 1 John 1, 3. And then it says to walk in the light and have fellowship one with another. Then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So we see in Genesis 5, 3, Children now are born in the image of their parents, not in the image of God. They bear the image of the earthly and are dead to the heavenly. See, this is a divine heavenly calling. This is a divine worship. No one has ever been born in the image of God except the Son of God. Christ died on the cross, 1 Peter 2.24 For even here unto were ye called. I started with verse 21. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. 
who when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he suffered. He threatened. He was, when he suffered, he threatened not when he was suffered. When they beat him, he was despised and rejected. He threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously God. Who his own self bear our sins and his own body on a tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. He died instead of me. I will never die. Now the way was made open for man to become a trinity. You see, we are one in Christ. The trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And this is, every person must know that God sent his son Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He went back to heaven. Fifty days after he arose from the dead, he sent the Holy Spirit to this earth to dwell in the lives of believers. And you cannot go to heaven because you only have a body and a soul when you are born. Until you are born again by the Spirit of God, you'll never go to heaven. This is the truth of the Holy Spirit. Greater is he that is in you, the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world. Now, I have to have the Trinity, the triune. Now, they are equal. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We, as a body of believers, are one in Christ. There is no division. That is the difference in religion and organizations. We are united by the blood of Christ. There can be no division in this body because we are one. This is the greatest sin today. And we must love one another the way Christ has loved us. By this shall all men know you are my disciples if you have love one for another. And why am I here today? Because God loves you and I love you. And this is the greatest gift that I can give you, his divine love. Since Christ has now ascended into heaven to sit down at the right hand of God, Hebrews 1, 3, we saw this in Hebrews, and this is the book that we have been studying. But this God put this into my hands that I would have this prescription for revival for every person. So that's the reason that I have not been giving you the lessons on Hebrews, but we are going to get back to them. Because in Hebrews, God is speaking to the Hebrews, the Jewish people that had been under the law. They had to know the Messiah. And it tells us in the book of Acts that thousands of Jews accepted the, their Messiah as their sins were forgiven, just like yours, they had to be saved the same way. There is no Jew, no Gentile, no female, no male. We're all one in Christ. This is the greatest thing. And he had to teach the Jews about how great this salvation was. This is greater than their earthly ministry that they had. This is a heavenly ministry. And this is what we must understand. And if you hate another person, you are a murderer. And every time I give this out, they say, give me that scripture. So you can hate and be a child of God. And he says in 1 John chapter 3, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal light abiding in him. You cannot be a child of God and hate another person. And then he says in the, another verse that we must see, he says, This I say, I love God and hateth his brother. Now this is chapter 4 of First John, verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. 
and he hath, and he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. This is what the Bible says, and there's no controversy. So you can't love God and hate. This is, this is God's word. And you have to do what this word says to be born again and to live this life. And then he says in Hebrews, as he was writing to the Hebrew people, and he said, He hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son. It's all about Christ today. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things, the creator of this world. The, I mean, these seven things he says about Christ. And every person needs to know them. And the express image of his divine person. And a prepared body was prepared for him by God. And that he upholds us by the word of this power, the Holy Spirit and the word and the blood. There is not a weapon under heaven as powerful as this book. He can break the hardest heart through this word. And then the Holy Spirit can't be conquered. So you're going to find out all of the blessings that God has given to us and that we have all of these infinite, infinite resources of heaven is ours. All of his attributes. We're one with Christ. We're one with our Heavenly Father. This is the most important lesson you're ever going to hear. And then he says, when he purged our sins and sat down at the throne of God, on the right hand of the throne of majesty. This is the voice of majesty speaking to you today. The voice of majesty, powerful than any man-made weapon. And I pray that as we get right with God, and then he says in, ver in chapter 9, verse 12, I have to give this right now because this is important. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having e obtained eternal redemption for us. Eternal redemption. He had to have his own blood to get into heaven. We have to come into the holiest by the blood. We have to be cleansed by his blood. And then in chapter 10, verse 12, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God, praying night and day for us. And then in 2.14, now this is the victory that you are going to see today. The victory, 2.14, for as much then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood. Likewise, took, he took part of the same for through death that he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You don't fear death. You see your body goes back to dust, and your spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. And if you have not been born again, your soul, the demons of hell meet your soul at death. You go to a place of torment. For us as believers, our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord, just like Christ went back to heaven the same way. And then, now Satan had no more right. No, lo <coughs> excuse me. So, no longer can Satan rule the universe. When he fell, he had the power over death after Adam sinned. But a third of the angels came with him, and that is in Revelation 12, 3 and 4. After Adam sinned, Satan seized the might of death. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. So Satan's overthrow is the first result of Christ's death. 
When our Lord rose from the dead and was received up into glory, he went up as the victor who had brought the devil to naught. Nothing now but unbelief or disobedience or ignorance of their liberty. You, if you want to be free, you can only be free in Christ. You only have liberty in Christ. Can hold men in bondage to Satan. You cannot have fear of Satan. He was defeated at the cross as a child of God. All Satan's basic basics of accusation before God, all his power to terrorize you, believers on earth is nullified for the judgment for believers was over at the cross. We come to the throne of grace, not judgment. He, he has taken all of our judgment all of our sins were laid on him. You think about your sins. Think about those nails going into his hands. They were all for you and for me. Astonishing news that death and judgment for the believers were are put on Christ are all past things. Do you see that, O oh believer? Satan has no power, no rights over you, none. So here we see that death. Now, I show you this all the time. This is John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And here are the nail prints that bore our sins. They should have been in ours, but he has taken that. What right then had Satan over believers? None. What right had then had Satan over believing ones? None whatsoever. Let them be subject to God and believe, thus resisting the devil and he will flee from you. And James 4, 7 and then we are to draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to us. The only way you can resist him is through the word of God. You, if you don't know this word, Christ even won the victory over Satan by the word of God. It is written, every word is pure as silver. Tried in the furnace of the earth, purified seven times. Astonishing witness to Satan's defeated position. He has no power over us. We must know this. And then, for those of you, you've got to study the book of Hebrews after we get back into this. Hebrews 10.10, 10, By thee which will, we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The result of Christ's work for us. We are completely, eternally, gloriously separated to God. Now, if you don't know these scriptures, I pray that you'll learn this Bible verse. This is life eternal, John 17, 3. That we may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And then we see when we come to 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know you not that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit which is in you, which you have of God? You're not your own. Therefore ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are his. Remember 1 Thessalonians 1, 23. And the God of all peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray that my spirit, soul, and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then Hebrews 10, 14, once again. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. 2 Thessalonians 2, 
13. There is so many things I want to give to you, and I just can't wait to get back to tell you what all you have in Christ. This is 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Remember, you're called brethren. You're called saints. You're an ambassador for Christ because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of this truth. The soul that learns to rest on that one offering will spend eternity in the delights of heaven. Hebrews 10, 18, there is no more offering for sin. This is the gospel of grace in Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There, if, as a child of God, if you are worrying, if you have fear, if your heart is troubled, you're disobeying God. Living in him, you find rest for your souls. Hebrews 4, verse 9. The believer rests in a perfect work of redemption as God rested from a perfect work of creation. All the blessings of knowing all that we have in him. And I won't have time to do these today, but I want you to understand in Romans chapter 6, verse 2. God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein. Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin.